What's going on everyone? Steven here. Today we're going to be talking about Lua. One of the biggest hurdles for me with Lua in the earlier stages of my game hacking uh, hobby <laughs> or whatever was trying to understand like why do we want to use Lua? You know, why use Lua? It seems like I could do everything I wanted to do via assembly. So why use Lua? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be doing something a little more advanced. Um, but for those of you who are beginners, I'm going to have this link in the description below. This is a blog post that I wrote that is, as you can see, an introduction to Lua. And I hold your hand through everything that we do in this article. right? So I discuss variables and functions and give you copious examples of everything. And uh, finally, in this article, we create a script that uses the game Terraria. And basically what we do is find max health, and we just have that value constantly be written to where current health is. Okay, So if you are a beginner to Lua, take your time and read this article. Because I promise, by the end of this, you'll feel a lot better about, you know, Lua and start to kind of wrap your head around why you might want to use Lua. All right, so once again, that link is in the description. But what we're going to do in this video is, I have a game up here, Girl X Mushrooms. It's just, you know, low budget game that's actually pretty fun, kind of hack and slash. But anyway... Um, since I've been messing with game cameras a lot lately, I wrote a script that makes the camera spin. Alright, so here I'm going to start the uh, application again. I had it paused. Close that. Alright, this is a table that I've already got going here where I've found certain values like camera, pitch, yaw, zoom. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do now is enable a couple of these scripts and now the camera spin script and watch what happens here alright see how the camera is spinning and it's zooming in and zooming out so this is a script in Lua to do this how would you do this in assembly can it be done in assembly absolutely but it's a lot more difficult <laughs> than using something like Lua. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. Um, so yeah, all right. The first thing that we'll do is to do this script, I'll go ahead and open the script here. All right, so this is it. Um, we need some values, right? Because to, to spin the camera, I need to know what the values are for the camera, right? So first off, uh, with a camera you have pitch, yaw, and zoom. So pitch is the up and down movement. Yaw is the left and right movement. Okay, so that's pitch and yaw. Between those two things, that's all you need for this kind of movement with like rolling and moving around the character. So once you find those values, you may need to find the instructions that are writing those values and then you knop out that instruction and then at that instruction you inject so that your custom values can be written there. But in the case of this game, I didn't even need to knop the instruction. I can still have the instruction work uh, because I think it only runs when I move the mouse. So otherwise, the values are still read by other instructions. So when I enable that camera spin script, it's reading those values and doing what it needs to do with the camera. So, you know, it just depends on what you run into with any given game. So anyway, in this uh, script here to get pitch and yaw uh, and zoom, we just, I've allocated my own memory and registered a symbol, initialized it, and then... Um, initialize the variable and then here in code this is the original instruction 
and then it jumps to return, but here I'm just moving the base of this camera structure. I'm moving the base address into this memory address. So we're creating our own pointer to the base of this camera structure. All right. So that's all the script is doing here. So once I enable that, then I have these addresses set. So this rotation pointer plus offset D0 is pitch, right? And then rotation plus D4 is yaw. And then rotation plus DC is the zoom. So with these three values, then I can do things with that. So here in this script, all right, uh, whenever you have this, this designates that everything underneath it will be treated as Lua. And that's Cheat Engine understands that. If we wanted it to be assembly, which these scripts are assembly by default, so you have to specify Lua. Otherwise, you can go back to assembly by doing that. So we don't want assembly, we want Lua. Um, and in the enable portion of the script, I have a function called cam spin. And what that function is going to do is when we come into the function, first it reads the value of pitch. And then it assigns it to a variable we've made called pitch. And so with that, then I have a couple of if statements. And what I've done is in the game here, if we watch the value of pitch, all right, so here at the top, we see that it goes up to almost 70. And at the lowest, we see negative 20. So that's our full range that we could work with. We could create our own range um, if we disabled that range called clamping. So typically with game cameras in games, that min and max that you can move pitch, that's a clamped range. It's clamped to this particular range. Okay, So you can get rid of clamping and then create your own clamping range if you want to, which I usually do when I'm making a free cam. But anyway, we're just looking at the max and min values here so that we know what we can work with then. So here in my if statement, if pitch is less than 45, okay, then, and then we go into this while loop here, okay, while pitch is less than 45, do this stuff, right? So when this function first runs, it's going to check to see if pitch is less than 45, right? If it is less than 45, it's going to do this until it's not less than 45. So what does it do in this while loop? First, I have a function called get data that runs. And here I have created a function that simply reads pitch, yaw, and zoom. Okay. So I can't just put that here at the top of the function because when you get into this while loop, if you don't read the new value that's created, you're just going to get stuck in an infinite loop. And that's no good. So once you come into the loop, right, it's going to read pitch, yaw, and zoom. And then it's going to write the value of pitch plus, you know, the slight amount. And this amount will vary. And that'll change the speed at which your camera is moving. Right. So this is going to make the camera move up. Okay. And then because we're adding that value to pitch and then we have yaw moving at this speed. So it moves sideways at this speed continuously. Right. And then we're adding the pitch. So this is the one that makes the camera move up if it's less than 45. The third one is zoom. And I have zoom set to, um, let's see, if we go here and look at zoom, let's zoom, all right, 
Now I have Zoom disabled, um, the game's zoom limitation. So yeah, I can zoom in and zoom out as much as I want. So anyway, I've created my own kind of superficial uh, value for zoom. So if zoom is greater than three, then write this value to where zoom is, right? So basically as you move the camera around and up and down, um, depending on which one of these loops it's in, the camera's gonna zoom in or it's gonna zoom out, right? So, and that just, this if statement around zoom makes it so that I'm not zooming in too far or too fast or whatever, right? Uh, and then finally, we have this, uh, if the home key is pressed, then set timer to disabled and break out of this loop. Now what this does is, if I enable this script and I don't have this in here, Cheat Engine will run the script as long as it's in this loop, and I can't disable the script from here. It'll make Cheat Engine not respond until it comes out of the loop. The problem is that we're continuously moving from one loop to another inside of this function, so we need to give ourselves ways to break out of it, right? So basically I have it to where when I hit the home key, um, break out of this loop and set the timer value, which I'll go into the timer in just a second, to false, which will stop this whole function from constantly looping. Okay? So this if here does the opposite of this, basically. So one moves the camera up and zooms in, the other moves the camera down and zooms out. That's basically it. So that's what these do. Same thing when it comes into this while loop, runs the get data function, takes that and writes new values accordingly, checks to see if we've pressed the home button or home key if we have, set the timer to false and break out of this loop. Um, so the timer related stuff is here and basically, this is how you make something, you create a timer that will do something every interval, you know, or every uh, loop or cycle, whatever. So you have your time that you set for how often this timer will trigger something, which for us, when the timer's triggered, we run this cam spin function. So that's why within, we need to set this timer to false. Because as long as it's true, that timer's going to run. And so if we disable the script, it's going to set that timer to false, which we're basically using the home key to disable it. So once we can actually disable the script, if we've already got the set to false, it's not going to do anything. It will just disable the script here or untoggle the script, which is completely fine. All right, so that's what we've done here. And the result is, whoops, once it runs. All right, and I can still manually move the camera around however I want, but it'll still do this spinning and zooming thing, right? So you've probably seen this maybe at a title screen in a game or something like that. And, you know, whatever. Cool effect. And I think a cool demonstration to show the power of Lua and what you can do um, with relatively little. All right, I just tried to disable the script, but it didn't disable. There we go. It waited until it went through the two cycles or these two if statements, right? And then these loops inside. So if you don't want that, so now I'm going to hit the home key boom, it stops, and then I can untoggle the script. So if for nothing else, for some of you, this is a good way to show you how to break out of if you're inside of a while loop or any other type of loop if you need to get out of it and you're inside of a timer. Um, if you didn't have the timer and we just ran the script and we had this function here and we called the function, it would only run once, and that's not what we want. So that's the necessity of the timer, right? 
Um, and for this function here, this get data, for those of you who are new, this would be the exact same thing as copying all these values and instead of having get data here, if we had this, you know, in each one of these sections, we would just be reading those three values and then doing the rest of the stuff there. Okay, so this was just a way for me to, instead of having those three lines of code in two different places, I can have the three lines in one place and then call that data from here. So, you know, just a little way to clean up your code. Anyway, uh, just a quick little video to demonstrate more of the power of Lua and some things to get your brain thinking about what all you can do with it. Uh, it's a way for you to, once you find some values in some different places and you do what you need to do with the instructions that write those values or read those values, whatever, then you can come in and do some really cool stuff with Lua. And you don't need to necessarily do things with values in the game. You can do all kinds of other stuff. Like, it's pretty much limitless. <laughs> but this video is going to start more videos on demonstrating ideas for using Lua. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like and a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, also, I've started live streaming. So my Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash sneaky mofo. I've got that in the description. Go give me a follow over there if you want to come hang out. Um, I just did a live stream recently with showing people uh, fly cam slash free cam related stuff. But I plan to be streaming a lot more frequently and you know I just like to have people come, hang out, talk game hacking, have some fun, learn some things, you know just generally do that. So thanks again for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.